Hey guys, today I'm going to be taking a look at Green Beret on the uh, Amstrad CPC long plane review. And uh, well, this uh, now this arcade conversion um, is quite an important game in the uh, history and life of the uh, Amstrad CPC. This is one of the very earliest and uh, most uh, anticipated and biggest uh, arcade conversions at the time. This was, you know, this was 1985-1986. Uh, when this was released and uh, the Amstrad CPC had been out for a couple of years um, at the time and uh, games on there were sort of getting uh, better and better over time since the uh, early Amsoft releases and a lot of people were really looking forward to uh, Green Beret and um, unfortunately it gave the Amstrad CPC a really really bad name um, because uh, people have sort of noticed that some of the games are running a bit slow and the scrolling is a bit crap well, this was a big budget game at the time, and uh, unfortunately this game, guys, has really, really crap scroll scrolling. So a lot of the multi-format magazines at the time certainly passed comments on this and sort of wrote off the Amstrad at the time. And, uh, well anyway, let's just get this started up, so you can see for yourself. Yeah. And it's that um, it's that scrolling there, guys, really, which uh, uh, really lets this game down, and really lets the Amstrad and its uh, users down. Uh, it's single screen with sort of a uh, really, really awful push scrolling system on the go there. It's like you've just been held back for a few seconds at a time. Uh, at least you sort of see what's sort of coming ahead of you, so you can sort of plan your moves. It's not actually just purely single screens uh, changing between each other. It does sort of push scroll through. But that's what I was talking about earlier. Um, I don't know which magazines commented on it uh, on this game on the Amstrad at the time. Possibly uh, C and VG. And uh, yeah, they begin to they began to look suspiciously at the Amstrad that uh, you know its games are never, is never going to scroll um, and then they're never going to play very well. Sure, it looks and sounds really nice, um, but uh, you know, obviously, guys, you know that's not true. Um, you've seen plenty, you've probably seen plenty of games on my uh, YouTube channel that uh, disprove that. Um, like Shinobi and Double Dragon and all that kind of stuff, Robocop, Batman the Movie. Really nice smooth scrolling is possible on the Amstrad. I don't need to go over that. But it's important to mention that <coughs> at the start of this review. And uh, yeah, it, it inspired, um, there was a recent video, um, an A Bit Wars video from the real Loco Maniac. If you haven't uh, subscribed, please do go to his channel. Um, the, the, uh, the Green Beret was a recent 8-bit Wars video <coughs> he did, comparing the Amstrad Spectrum and Commodore 64 version. That was a couple of days ago, so it ins inspired me to um, go and give this a long play at last. But um, after having, uh, having done so, I uh, apologise to Axelino, uh, Metra, and uh, I think another guy on YouTube. I've already done long play videos for uh, Green Beret. Perhaps I should have left it a few more months, but sorry guys, I don't mean to steal your thunder. Uh, but this is the first proper, probably review of it on the Amstrad on YouTube. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed uh, the 8-Bit Wars video, it's nice to see the difference in the comparison. So go and watch that, see the uh, Spectrum and uh, Commodore 64 versions, which uh, vary wildly. Now there's my uh, main character sprite there, the Green Beret. I'm going to steal a little observation from a uh, local Maniac's review. That uh, it looks like he's uh, mincing along there very nicely. There he is. <laughs> in his little green uniform. It looks more like Robin Hood mincing along. Men in tights. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's crude animation. <laughs> Um, but this is 1985-1986, uh, early days for programming games on the Amstrad for sure. But I do like the graphics. Sure, they're, they're blocky and chunky, but they're really colourful. And uh, you know, the, 
pay good homage to the arcade original. They've done a good job here. And the music and sound effects are really good as well. We'll come on, we'll come on to that again later. Now we just reached the end of this uh, first uh, level. And this is the first like confrontation or boss battle. This time we're just battling lots and lots of soldiers all at once on one screen. But we've uh, saved ourselves a flamethrower here. There you go. As long as you've kept the flamethrower for the end, it's easily done. Now on to mission two. And basically we'll uh, get a battle through four areas to rescue uh, the captives. And uh, you're, you're alone in this, in this mission and all you're armed with is that knife. Kill those blue dudes to uh, pick up weapons and we've got like a, sort of, like a rocket launcher now with four bullets. You can see that at the bottom left corner of the screen. Now those guys in the green jackets, they do flying kicks. They're a lot easier to deal with uh, on the Amstrad version than the Speccy. You can see there. If you get too close, you, you can jump as well, as long as you've um, started your knife attack before, the, um, before too late. You can always kill them, but you can just jump over them and they run away from you. The other guys in the brown uh, jackets there, you can just like uh, jump, jump over them or ignore them. They'll just keep moving in the same direction they're coming from. <coughs> but watch out for those uh, like gun emplacements there. I like to try and stick to the top of the uh, level as much as I can. It's nice that you can have it. It can be split into two, three levels high. And the guys in orange and red, obviously they've got guns or grenades, so watch out for their bullets. There's a cool, there's a cool bit of uh, simple music in the background there. But really, it's probably about the same sort of 20-second thing looping around, uh, which is which is cleverly done. If you're uh, running, like, if you're a programmer running low on memory, and you don't want to slow the game down too much, a simple bit of music looping through. And if it's as cool as this, it makes it quite a good background music actually. I think that's quite cool actually. And there's some really uh, good meaty sound effects. Gunfire and stabbing noises and stuff like that. Very good. And you know what? It controls and plays rather well. It may not be as responsive as it could have been. But when you get once you get used to sort of uh, when you at what point you need to use your knife and judge that time, judge your timings right. Um, it's, it's actually really good fun, and it's really playable, and it's certainly not as bad as it's made out to be. Now check this out guys, look, there's only three enemies on the screen there, and I've got them running along with me. If you can time it right, you can basically run right to the end of the level, because there's only uh, three enemies allowed on screen at any time. So that's a handy little tip there to help you get through. <laughs> a bit of a gameplay flaw, really. Now this is the end of the second level. I'm getting attacked by uh, rusky dogs. Huskies maybe? Not huskies, no. Wolves or Russian dogs. As you can see there, that's a Russian uh, submarine there. Yeah guys, and uh, well basically this is uh, based uh, in Russia. It's, it's another Cold War style game. Remember, remember I did Strider last time. And uh, yeah, actually when this game was released in America, it was actually called uh, Russian Attack. Rush and attack, but just with the N hyphen eight. Uh, sorry, yeah, uh, just the rush and attack, it, and it sounds like rushing attack, uh, which is a bit naughty. Uh, but in Europe and Japan, it was uh, released as Green Beret. Sorry, I didn't explain that very well. Uh, anyway, um, sequels to this game. Uh, there was an official arcade sequel called uh, Missing in Action or MIA. And it wasn't very good. It just, it just didn't have the charm of the uh, original Green Beret. Um, and uh, Imagine Software, who did these uh, conversions, um, they released a game called Vindicator, The Vindicator, which apparently is supposed to be a sequel to Green Beret. Um, I think they only mentioned it in sort of a few press uh, releases or whatever. It's not on the uh, box or something. I, I don't remember it being in the box art or, or instructions as this Green Beret 2 or whatever. They probably didn't get the license from uh, Konami. Konami is uh, the company 
with your green beret. You know, on this bit here, if we can get to the top there, make things a lot easier. Oh, there's one of those blue guys with a weapon pickup. Nice. But this game it does represent a good challenge. I mean, I've done this long play about losing a life because I've played it over and over for donkey's years. I still enjoy this game, despite the uh, crap scrolling. And it's a, it's a question of knowing what moves to use at what, at what times, like when you need to jump. But if you jump and uh, there's another enemy coming, you know, you could end up sort of falling into the enemy and losing a life. And remember, you can do, uh, uh, basically um, lay on the floor and use your knife. It gives you a bit of extra reach. That's pretty good for tight situations. And you can quickly sort of uh, swap left and right of your knife and tacks. So you can get out some really sticky situations where you get surrounded. It's just a bit of a shame that there could be an enemy waiting right on the other side of the screen. But at least you've got that push scrolling to see what's coming ahead just about. So you can so you have a second or two just to sort of decide what you're going to do. Right there, I decided to use my special weapon just to clear the way a bit. Oh yeah, by the way, The Vindicator is uh, it's a very good game in itself, and the unofficial sequel re released by Imagine. Um, there's a couple of long play videos, I think, on the Hordax channel. And uh, he says he's going to send me all the uh, parts of the uh, video he's done, so I'll, I'll make one big video for that and give that a review at some point. But we're about to reach the end of level 3, and a uh, bit of a helicopter attack here. Now this is a very cool end of level boss. There's actually quite a few of them. Here he comes. Kill the weapon guys, so we've got a rocket launcher. And fire your rockets at the helicopter. <clears throat> Watch out for his grenade attacks. Wait, it's not a helicopter, was that? Was that a gyrocopter? And this is the boss just like in the arcade. And the levels are just like the arcade as well. They've done a very good uh, attempt at getting as, as, as much of the arcade region as possible into the game. And you know what guys, I think this game would have rated really, really highly on the Amstrad if they had proper scrolling on the go. This would have been one of the most fun and best arca uh, arcade conversions on the Amstrad, I reckon. I still really like this game. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that really hate it. Uh, maybe, maybe it's a bit of nostalgia on my part. It's one of the earliest games I did own on the Amstrad. But it is uh, still really fun. Uh, I really enjoyed doing this long play. It's a long time since I played it, a few practices, and I was able to sort of uh, boss through the game without losing life. Took me a few attempts though. And use a higher ground to your advantage, like here, you can sort of jump between the uh, sections. That makes uh, progressing a lot easier. But yeah guys, uh, I mean, going back to talk about um, how the Amstrad got a bad reputation um, because of the scrolling in this game. If anyone remembers which magazine, magazines, plural, um, where it was talked about and uh, where this sort of like myth came from or whatever, then I'd really like to know, so post your comments. I'm sure, I'm sure probably uh, Larry Bundy Jr. or one of you really knowledgeable uh, retro geeks out there will uh, will know. I'd like to I'd like to read up on that. That'd be good. That'd be interesting. But yeah, this game this game is still fondly remembered. I think uh, a lot of the Amsha community, even though we should be really pissed off about the uh, crap scrolling, uh, rem remember this fondly and uh, still really enjoy it. Um, I've no idea actually what Amstrad Action said about the game at the time, or what they rated it. Let's see if I can find out quickly. Oh, look at that! We've got three guys behind me now. Hopefully, we can just keep legging it to the end. Oh, it's getting close. <laughs> Army with a gun that's ready to fire at me. Running the risk a bit. I'm not sure you 
will fire if he's too close to me. Which will probably work to our advantage. Alright, Amsterdam action in issue 11. Gave us 83%. Yeah. Do you know what, guys? I think I pretty much agree with that. Um, maybe this should be marked really poorly, but I see because the scrolling and stuff. But you know what? I, I really love the graphics. Really good, chunky, colourful graphics, animation. Simple but good little music and really nice sound effects and just presentation overall. And the fact they tried to cram in as much of the, of the arcade game as possible. And it does feel, just feel and play pretty similar to the arcade. You know what? I'm going to kind of agree and give it 8.5 out of 10. So that's my score, guys. 8.5 out of 10. And uh, I think, guys, we've reached the end of the final mission. And this is quite easy to win. Basically, lots of guys and multiple flamethrowers. But if we stay close to the uh, left of the screen there, we can dispatch them pretty quickly. And that's an easy one. There you go. Congratulations, you rescued captives. And that's the end of the game. And you get a nice little uh, musical interlude there. And the game starts all over again, and you just uh, it gets increasingly difficult. I think this time round, there's now four enemies um, per screen. One, two, three, four. There you go, four enemies this time. So we'll just uh, make a little edit there, jump to the high score table. Obviously I can't be asked to sort of uh, play through it all again, just to see if there's anything different. I'm sure it doesn't, I'm sure it just gets tougher and tougher each time, forever and ever. So there you go, Green Beret, 8.5 out of 10. Um, thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed. And let's not be too harsh on this game and the Amstrad, it's all good. Alright, goodbye.